Goal setting 2025, we're nearing the end of this epic series. We're gonna take a deeper dive into the best execution strategy today. This is really tire meets the road stuff, so buckle up, it's coming up. Before we kick things off, if this is your first time rolling with the Unity Tribe, uh, allow me to introduce the crew. Behind the camera, we've got Richard, and I haven't turned my uh, computer on Classic yet. Rookie era. Classic rookie era. Classic uh, I'm Yanni Bormeister. To my left is uh, Phil White, none other than Dr. Phil. <laughs> and uh, we are Unity Gym. Uh, to, to complete the team, uh, the awesome foursome, Rad would be here, but he's back on Monday, so big news there. Uh, now, we teach people to become superhumans. If you ever want to know the secrets to our program, we give it all away for free. We've got three blueprints, nutrition, flexibility, and strength. Those are the three components of our program. You can get them all free on our website, www.unitygym.com. Com. Uh, at the bottom of any page, there's a free resources section. We give all the best stuff away for free uh, because we just love to help people. Anyway, how are you feeling today, Phil? Good. Good. I'm excited. I just did a uh, strength and conditioning session with a ultra marathon runner, which is just the, that coaching side of thing. It just really gets me going. So I'm pumped up. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, and I've taught <laughs> a few classes this last week while Rad's been away. Um, and it's, yeah, it's been really good. It's been really good yeah. to connect. I've done. Our classes for the last th four days, today was, uh, actually, I, I lie, yesterday I had the cover for Rad because he came in, he said he was going to work and it, he was just in too much of uh, dis uh, discomfort after his operation, so he went home and I covered for him, trained uh, at our usual coach time at 8, 8.30 in the morning. But this morning I, I joined the 6 a.m. crew and just put a mad workout in and um, it's felt really good. It's felt really good training with the team. I'm very, very sore because I get a little bit show off -y and lift more than I'm Understatement like. of the century. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably lift a bit more than I should be lifting because I've been on vacation for so long. But, uh, you know, yeah, it's felt really good. Especially Man, when it comes to uh, muscle ups, when you uh, see other people doing muscle ups, you have to just. Yeah, <laughs> I was doing all these muscle ups last night whilst I was teaching the class and and uh and just uh geeing them up so That's anyway uh, anyway in just, the last 24 hours i've done about 50 muscle ups it's uh and, yeah. and uh, my body's like woo. just because it blows my mind and before we get onto things with this ultra marathon runner like it just blows my mind so she ran across iceland for fun like not for an event because <laughs> you not, not for yeah. like didn't post it on social media wasn't like raising money her and her friend just ran across iceland which is 570 k's like sleeping twice like they're just Really? Bust it out, yeah, because there's 300 Ks in the middle, which is uh, wilderness. And so if you sleep, you have to carry more food. Wow. And so they're like, well, I guess we can't sleep there because we won't be able to buy food. They're totally unsupported. And so they oh ran up to the beginning of the wilderness, had a bit of a sleep, yeah. ran 300 Ks nonstop, and then got to the other end, had a bit of a sleep, had some food, and then ran the last couple hundred Ks to get to the southernmost point of Iceland. Took wow. a photo at a lighthouse while a storm was rolling in. They had to run a marathon to get back to the town to have... <laughs> like to get out of there, like just so, for fun. So like, how amazing. many days? How many days was that? Oh spread over? god, I can't remember. Like I can't remember, but it was god. The amount of um, physiological damage that would occur to your body doing that and not sleeping and recovering would yeah, be. Yeah, but you intense. know, she just she just does like then you know she just competed at the twenty four hour running world championships yeah, not so yeah, long yeah. ago, and so she's bounced back fine. Yeah. Like, <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's all like incredible at that level. It's like just yeah, we were talking yesterday about people uh, achieving amazing feats. That's a really yeah. good example. You yeah. know, like uh, um, the way the mind works, doing something like that is so far beyond the realm of reality for the majority of people. And this was my exact example to you yesterday. Yeah. It's just about your mind, like changing your mindset. Yeah. You for know? Her after, I've worked with a lot of ultramarathon runners and like for that top level, it's just, can you get through it that you're like not completely falling apart body wise? And are you mentally strong enough to just keep going? Yeah, you know, that's exactly it's right. Just, fitness doesn't become a thing anymore. It's just yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got to be really mentally strong to continue running when you're pooping yourself because your body is yeah. just pushed to that point where your kidneys start to freak out and, 
And that happens all the time. You know, I, I've met many, many ultra marathon runners who talk about the, the pitfalls of when you, when you, you haven't prepared enough for, for a run and, you know, the mind is just going, no, I'm completing this and I'm finishing it. And the body starts to go, no, you're not. And and the majority of the time they finish it, you know, but they finish covered in their own spew, wee and poo and sometimes blood. (laughs) And what a way to start out. All right. Yeah. (laughs) But hey, this is what I'm talking about. It's all mindset, guys. And that's what we're dealing with right now. And this is why I'm so pumped about this series. So... I hope you've all got your fitness strategy worksheets. For those of you on the podcast, and I've listened to a couple of the episodes, it sounds freaking awesome. Yeah, good on, on Phil. He's it's on, crushing it. It's on Spotify. It's on Pocket Cast. It's like just popped I'm up in my sure feed. It's on Apple now. It's, a, it's on. It's, uh, it's, it's, yeah, on, it's, cr- getting, it's on yeah. the Google one, and so, yeah, it's cool. So check it out, and it, yeah, it's so exciting. Just it like just popped up on my podcast feed in between like all these podcasts that are super legit and I was like, oh, look at that. One thing, one, yeah, one thing that I'm really upset about is though that when you say, hey, Google, play the Sound of Movement podcast, it plays Kanye West. <laughs> ah! We'll get there. We'll get bigger than Kanye. <laughs> oh, it is just... All right. Yeah, he's... there you go. So... Turn Google off quickly, Richie, because it's actually talking back to us. Sorry, we have one of the Google systems in here. And uh, anyway, anyway, so look, w- what I want to dive into today on, on point, and I'll just quickly um, give Karina McCormick a shout out because 300 knuckle push ups is a lot of push ups. Mm. And she's at 180, and I'm very proud of you, Karina. That's awesome. Uh, I'd love to know what your black belt is in. Is uh, I'm assuming based on the knuckle push ups that it's a form of karate. Uh, but um, it'd be cool. It'd One be cool thing to... that I would like, I think it's just a good point when talking about something like this type of goal where you've got this like badass, you know, 300 knuckle push-ups is like a cool objective thing to hit. Um, I guess you're someone who definitely is considered, like you're very invested in the kind of growth mindset and considering your goals in the sort of larger picture. Uh, the issue I have when people get really into like just doing push-ups is that it's a very one side dominant. Oh uh, my god, exercise. we're gonna go. We're gonna go so deep on this. Sometimes topic when you with, have uh, with the, one of our emails yeah, that's come through. But I yeah. just consider like if your large goal is three hundred knuckle push ups and that's your BHAG and that's just like everything else can go to the side, then you can do that. But uh, you're quite likely to then have like a bit of pretty solid imbalance between your your the muscles at the front of your chest, and the muscles at the, on your back. <coughs> so Excuse I me. think just try and consider how these you know cool goals like that will then impact your maybe your larger goal is about being you know healthy and fit or competing in taekwondo if you've busted busted your shoulders um because you've achieved this goal then maybe that's not fitting into your larger plan karina stick make sure you stick around till the end or uh, listen to the end later on if you can't make the end of the podcast because i am going to be talking about an email that's come through from another listener and another reader who subscribes to our um he subscribes to everything basically legend of a guy and he's got a very similar goal related to bench pressing and a number on the bench press. And uh, he's a 51-year-old guy, and I've given him a huge response to his email. This is this is his email. I don't know if you can see that. It's a whole page, and mine was all my, my response was starting down here, almost a page as well, because this is something we've, we're very passionate about here at Unity Gym. Uh, I also had an email from an ex-member who's a really good friend of ours who's just been loving this series and has talked about... Uh, really, really serious mental blocks to um, sitting down and actually putting pen to paper and writing goals. And he, he's, he's wanted to know whether that's a common thing. So I'm going to go into that as well. So we've got a lot to cover in this show. And um, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm very, very excited to dive deeper into this because now we're talking about, you know, the, the execution side of things. And we did tip on this a little bit yesterday. We started with using our fitness strategy session worksheet that's very specific to fitness goals in the gym. Uh, we talked about, you know, just to recap, I just want to have a look. I've got a lot of notes here and uh, I don't know how I ended up with so many notes, but I do have them. So I'm going to use them. Um, to recap on this series, we've learned to identify your brain software and, 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 pro, and whether it's programmed for success or failure. That was what we call our story in the earlier uh, episode last week. We've then learned to identify whether your ego is driving and uh, we've done that through identifying the seven symptoms of ego. So if you, if you missed that one, go back. I'm starting to link them all throughout these videos later on as well. Uh, we've also learned that you can alter your relationships with emotions and, to avoid, and, and, and how to avoid self-sabotage through that. 
Uh, and now this week, we've gone deep into goals. You know, what's your BHAG, often referred to as your mission or even a mission statement uh, in, in business? Uh, strategy, you know, the goals reverse engineered to create a program or I like to say tangible stepping stones. And then the plan, what's your daily schedule going to be? And that's what we're going to focus on today. The tasks, the activities, the rituals, the habits, and how to link those with your uh, your big, hairy, audacious goals, you know. And so, and, and I, I think that this is really important that people understand that this is sort of really where you want to be focused on, you know. We, we spoke about this yesterday a little bit, and we gave you even some examples of what we give our tribe here. But they're going to really be, um, it's important to sort of customize those for, for your personal goals, you know, because... Um, I wouldn't know, I mean, I, uh, Rad would be better at, at, at answering that, but I wouldn't know the first thing about, um, you know, spe- specificity for Taekwondo. I did Taekwondo for about two weeks when I was maybe 12 years old, um, and my martial arts experience is very limited. I, I spent 16 years boxing, and it's very different to martial arts. You know, I did four years of, uh, of a Muay Thai kickboxing before that and had four amateur fights and then decided that kickboxing wasn't for me because I kept getting my ass kicked and went to boxing. Um, I'm so, a black belt in Ultimate Frisbee. So uh, Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, he's a beast at Ultimate Frisbee and soon to be um, challenging Olympic athletes uh, in beach volleyball. Not, you know? a thing. No, not even a thing. <laughs> Mate, I'm going to hold you to this. Um, so, look, you know, the specificity part is really, really important, and we're going to give you as much help as we can, but when push comes to shove, you guys need to start thinking and framing it up for yourselves. Yeah, it's you know? all about these principles. Like, we're trying to give you examples and, and just frameworks, these principles that you can apply to whatever goal it is. So, you know, we'll use lots of fitness examples here, but obviously a lot of the time Yanni's been talking about, you know, happiness goals, wealth goals, all these things, and it's so important to have that framework so you, you, you're seeing the bigger picture. And, and That's, you know, ex- that's sure. exactly right. And Phil and I had a little conversation this morning about, you know, the fact that I spent, I, I like broke like some cardinal rules and habits and behaviors that I'd set up for myself to achieve my wealth goals and my investing goals uh, uh, by going on a holiday that cost an absolute fortune. And it left, <coughs> excuse me, I'm still getting over a bit of a cold. <coughs> it left us completely broke, basically, you know, and, and um, sweet holiday there. <laughs> it, was an, it was an amazing trip. It was an amazing trip around Europe. But, uh, you know, I said to Phil, oh, you know, I'm really, I'm, I'm reeling a little bit because we're in an, a situation now where we, we want to move our uh, house to, to get my kid into the local catchment to put him in school near our work because Kalisha works locally, I work here, and we just don't have the money. And we found like the ideal apartment and, uh, and, and, and at the start of last year, we would have easily been able to just say, stuff it, we'll break our lease now and, and all that. And it's just, you know, whatever, whatever's happened, we, we spent too much money on our holiday. Uh, but Phil sort of pulled me up and said, yeah, well, hang on a minute, you know, based on your values wheel and the way you assess yourself, you know, it was really important for you to spend that time connecting with your family and doing all that. And it helped to recharge, you know, the batteries of my relationship with my, uh, with my fiance, Kalisha and my children and all that. And, you know, it's very, very true. Like, this is what it's all about, guys. It's all about creating balance. And this goes back to Karina's goals. Um, very, very specific, a lot of specificity there. And, uh, 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 my friend, who I'm not going to disclose his name because uh, he hasn't given me permission to share the email that he sent. So I'm going to call him Ben for the purposes of today. Um, you know, he, his goal is very specific. And uh, you do have to be careful when you're that specific. His goal is at 51 years old, he wants a 100 kilo bench press. And, um, you know, his, his why is beautiful. His why is, um, and I was able to identify it very quickly in his email, he's got a 17-year-old son and exercising and, and, and revisiting weights training has allowed him to connect on a much deeper level with his son. And that is a brilliant why. You know, that's going to fuel his motivation tank for a long time to come. You know, I know how strong that is because I've got children of my own. And so, you know, we spoke yesterday about the concept of having a why and attaching a deep, deep rooted why to your BHAG, your big, hairy, audacious goal. And, you know, there's an exercise that I'm going to sort of talk about a little bit tomorrow. I'll talk about a little bit today because today is about execution and tomorrow is going to wrap up execution. I've got a special guest coming on the show to help us who's a motivational coach. That's all he does. And, um, you know, what we do is we do the five whys. 
you ask yourself why five times and each time you have to peel back another layer of the onion and get deeper. And when you can't go any deeper, when there's no other answer, that's your true why. And, um, and that's a very common exercise to use. So, you know, you ask, why do I want to do 300 knuckle push-ups? Then you ask why again, then you ask why again, then you ask why again, and then you get to the root cause of it all. And then that becomes what you write down as your why, you know, and it might just be for Karina that you want to be an absolute badass and respected by your peers. That's totally, that's a deep why, you know, Um, we, we spoke in the psychology component about how we are herd animals and we do crave the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Acknowledgement, um, uh, just, uh, God, respect. What, respect, you know, <laughs> it's not the word I'm looking for, but they'll do, yeah. of our tribe. You know, it's very, very important. We want to level up the way we're perceived and seen and the way we present ourselves to our tribe. And so um, looking like a badass and, and gaining respect, uh, that's very much what drives me, you know, because I want to leave a legacy, and we spoke about this earlier in the series, uh, and really, really affect, impact positively the health and fitness industry. And the only way I can do that is to win the respect of you guys by presenting in the best form possible. If I was sitting here overweight, uh, you wouldn't respect me, you know. <laughs> yeah. So we've been talking about why for many days now. And, yep. and, and, you know, we both strongly believe that's like, you know, the most important thing, hence why we spend all the time on it, getting that psychology around your decision making. But now... Yep. Time for execution. No, now it's time for execution. I'm going to hold you to that. I'm going to keep you on. I'm going to keep you on <laughs> keep, it as soon as keep, you start talking keep about me you on know, point. these big exciting keep me things. On point. Well, here's the thing. So what what we need to do is remind ourselves. We we and and Phil's going to hate me because I'm still talking about why, ah. but that's a big <laughs> component of execution. You need to keep reminding yourself of your why. You know, because when when if if your big hairy audacious goal is associated with exercise, and I'll use an example I, I deal with a lot, which is people who take up running as a form of exercise to achieve their body composition goals or something like that. There is going to come many a day when you don't feel like going for a run. It might be pouring with rain. It might be the middle of winter and it's cold outside. You might not feel like your your shoes are holding up, and you don't. And you know, you people we make all sorts of excuses. The amount of times I've heard, I'm going to start running, but I need to get a new pair of sneakers first. Uh, and until I get paid, I'm not going to get those sneakers. So that's going to be next month. And, you know, it's, it's just a barrier of entry, you know. Um, and I, am, I always, um, I, I, one of my favorite books of all time is by the CEO and founder of Nike. Um, and the, the book's called Shoe Dog, and it's um, it's it's incredible. And and he's a runner. And uh, uh, anyone who didn't realise that the owner of Nike is actually a runner and a very passionate runner, and um, a distance runner. And you know when they when you go back and have a look at the shoes that they actually launched Nike with, and and they used to run with, they were no uh, greater than what I'm wearing here, which is an uh, uh, unfortunately an Adidas shoe, <laughs> but. Um, this, they had no soul. They had no air, air pockets and all sorts of crap. And they're not like the new Asics that they've got now with the gel and the Sicanos and all sorts of stuff like that. So having shitty sneakers is absolutely no excuse for not going for a run, you know. <laughs> Turns out didn't have sneakers until, you know, not many like humans. Yeah, were pretty that's around. right. Anyway, exactly. Exactly. Execution, execution, execution. Execution, execution, execution. So what you need is a very powerful why, and you need to re, um, remind yourself of that every day. And the process of doing so is through verbal affirmation. And this becomes our first execution method on a day-to-day basis, because now you know all these psychological barriers are going to come. You know that you're going to experience um, emotions that probably want to sabotage your execution process. Uh, you've got a plan of attack. You've got some big, hairy, audacious goals. You've reverse engineered those goals to have stepping stones that are tangible, that are going to keep you on track and knowing that you're heading in the right direction. But the problem is, what happens tomorrow when you hit a, a roadblock where you have a thought that's negative that might be saying, you're never going to achieve that so goal? So just on that, we'll pause there, just because I think uh, we've talked about that reverse engineering, but I guess we maybe didn't give some specifics uh, yesterday with, you know, maybe we'll use this example of a hundred kilo bench press. He's got a, uh, you know, 92 kilo one RM at the moment. Should we maybe have a go at like how you'd put in those reverse engineered timeline things now just to have a bit of a clear example of 
the well, reverse I, the engineer? Problem, the or? problem is that that's so broad. It's it, you, I don't think we can talk about that. And I, I see where you're trying to go, but I don't think that that's what we need to do here because everyone's going to have such different goals. And to reverse engineer a goal... Um, is for, for something that's so tangible as a 100 kilo bench press, it's going to come down to your coaching and your programming style. And I answered that um, personally to Ben, uh, which was that, you know, it, he, he had a structure of how he wanted to do it based on his one RM, one rep maximum, which was currently at a certain weight. And, um, and I just basically said, you know, we would use an undulating periodization model. We would set up a program like this. And he uh, was testing his, he was do, training doing 1RMs all the time. And I said, look, no good coach would ever let you do that regularly. Not, the best powerlifters and strongmen in the world do not train their 1RM. It's the risk versus reward profile there is completely out. So I suggested to avoid ever doing 1RMs unless you're going to do competition or something like that, yeah. or once or twice a year when you test it. Yeah. Other than that, it's, it's about periodization. And that's we can't sit here. We can't. We can waste a whole show talking about one person's goal. I want to talk about the macro execution picture. Like, what are the habits that that need to be put into place for everybody yeah. to achieve their yeah, goals? I think Does that make it. sense? No, absolutely, and I agree. But I'm I'm trying to be the voice of the you know people behind the you know behind the screens asking like, okay, how do we tangibly do things? So. Uh, yeah, I guess just to, uh, that's a good explanation as to why we're not. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's too it's too broad. I can't, I, it'd be selfish of so me. So I think or... the important thing to understand is if you do have this goal that you're looking for, um, you know, it will take some amount of understanding of coaching methods or whatever, um, you know, an expert in that field will need to kind of help you reverse engineer that if you don't. That's um, exactly have right. Your, Either you, you put a lot of time into your own education around that or you work with someone who's an expert in that. So if you do have financial to go goals, go and talk to your accountant and you'll have a much more productive session because you do have these sort of ideas in mind. Yeah. It's, if you don't go into these, you know, a personal training session with the idea of what you're trying to achieve or you don't go into the accountant or whatever um, – yeah, it won't be as effective a session. Yeah. So. Build, building the plan, and what Phil's trying to do is get me to build a plan for everyone watching, which I can't do because it would just be too no, broad. No, and I'm not saying it would, but I, I think just trying to give people an idea because we've said execution here. So um, yeah, you know, just yeah, to, yeah. to illustrate that you know, there's these general principles that if you apply with that, that, That's exactly right. Yeah. The principles that we're about to, that I want to share is going to help everybody, every single person. And this is the problem. The, 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 Majority of people fail on execution, not because of their plan, not because of their failure to plan. Planning is sort of fun. And, and the process of reverse engineering your goal, which we covered yesterday, which is to create a BHAG, create a Y, create, break your goal down into stepping stones that are uh, tangible records of whether you're progressing properly. And then Break those stepping stones down, focus on the very first one and say, what habits do I need to create on a daily basis or what tasks do I need to tick off on a daily basis that is going to get me to that first step? And then reevaluate that and then get yourself to the second step. And then if you don't make the second step, go back and look at the tasks and habits and go, okay, well, were they really in a line with that or was I executing those daily tasks and habits? Is that what you want me to sort of um, talk about? Yeah, I think just um, Ben here has put up like a, a question there saying, uh, is it your intention to discuss the live shows and how you might actually roadmap a BHAG into an actionable program? Okay. Well, is it your intention to discuss in the live shows? How you might actually, sorry, I have to read it myself so I fully understand the question. Yeah. So, this, okay, this, this is exactly how to do it then, okay? And, uh, and I'll try and do this. How much time have we got? I'll try and do this quickly because I do want to share a couple of the higher level uh, habits that are important for people to understand and do because the problem is that no matter how good we create this plan, if you don't start to, to, to focus on habits that are going to reprogram your brain to think the right way, you're going to find a way to self-sabotage every single time. Like that's the majority of people. I mean, the other email that I've got here from another close friend of mine who I'm going to call James because I, don't, I, I didn't ask permission to share his email either. And they might be totally fine with it, but I just don't want to, uh, I don't want to do that um, without asking first, is that he's struggling to put pen to paper. 
And a lot of people will find that, you know, like I, I have this huge visceral reaction when I go to actually write down some goals. For, for, uh, and, and that's based on the psychology, the stuff that we spoke about before. Then if you get over that hurdle, there's the everyday challenges of actually going through with the steps that you come up with that are going to be the habits that you're trying to form. And those are the areas that I think people need the help with the most, you know. So if we go back to, you know, um, what uh, uh, Phil and uh, our friend Ben has sort of asked here, how do we reverse engineer? I'm going to say this one more time because it's actually more simple than people want to make it. You start with a big, hairy, audacious goal, and we've said that you should really not have more than five because any more than five is just going to create, it's going to spread you too thin. One of my favorite strength coaches in the world is a good friend of mine uh, who I've worked with personally for a long time, uh, Tony Bataji. He used to say all the time, you can't ride two horses with one ass. And that means basically what he's saying is choose one thing to focus on and, and nail that one thing. And you guys are going to hear a couple of the best calisthenics um, guys in the world reinforce that when they come here in March and they're on the show and they're doing the workshop here at, at Unity. Um, you can't work on too many different skills or too many different big, hairy, audacious goals in the one area at once. And what we spoke about yesterday with your values wheel is choose the five elements that you're wanting to crush in your life and put one goal in each of them. And that's the way that I suggest you do it. Now, from there, with each of those goals, you need to do that reverse engineering process. And it's up to you how deep you go. I like to go monthly. I like to have a monthly check-in that's very tangible, that I know that at the end of every 30-day odd period, if, I, if, if I'm heading in the right direction in each of those five areas of my life, uh, but with, for, for simplicity's sake, on our fitness strategy session, we only have done six months and three months. And then from there, you need to focus on a, a series of habits, daily rituals or, you know, habits or rituals, whatever you like to call them. Uh, and I like to choose three that are going to support that. So, you know, if, if it's a bench pressing goal, then you need to be bench pressing every day, but you not every day. You need to be bench pressing in a manner that gives you enough time, 72 hours between workouts to maximize super compensation. You also need to be training in a manner, like Phil said before, that's structurally balancing your body. You can't just do bench press. And I've, I've spoken to um, Ben about that in, in the email. You need to be also working pulling movement patterns. You also need to be working on, now you're working on a lot of global muscles. You need to be working on deep stabilizer muscles too. So you need to be making sure that the rotator calf and all of those scapular control muscles are also being exercised sufficiently. And then in my opinion, you shouldn't be just doing upper body exercise because that's going to create a very unstructured and imbalanced physique. So you also need to be um, following a good lower body program as well. Okay, so that'd be another daily habit, daily ritual. That's that's going to cover your entire week of training there, um, Ben. And then on top of that, you probably need to have a really good recovery program in place. So you need to align yourself with a good physical therapist if you're in America, physiotherapist if you're in Australia. Yes or anywhere else, um, massage maybe, you know, you need to learn um, myofascial release so you, that you can treat yourself with massage balls and foam rollers yeah, and things like that. I think like even that. before that, you've got to be making sure that your technique's good, like, because, you, you know, you can avoid a lot of remedial therapy if you, you get the stuff yeah, right from the get-go. So working absolutely. with a physio first on how to structure your program and how to, uh, you know, complete the technique and Hopefully, physios are on top of this, but a lot of you don't actually learn a lot of stuff in uni. So, you know, a strength and conditioning coach who's experienced in these lifts, really important to get that stuff right. Or if you're on the UMS online coaching, then you could probably just post a video and we can give you some feedback. Yeah, that's exactly right, you know. And so, you know, for me, um, if, I, if I was to say, if, I, if I'm to be an absolute um, prick and just plug our system and program. Yeah, being a prick if you're being helpful. <laughs> yeah, that's true, I guess. I would say, okay, start with your structural balance um, uh, blueprint, your strength testing, your symmetry testing, and your flexibility testing. That's going to then help you devise a program fully customized to your needs with the priority of increasing bench press. So bench pressing day would come on Monday because that's usually when you've had the most recovery over the weekend. And that's the workout that so long as you're not out partying all weekend, but you, um, Ben's not. He's 51 years old. So he will Might be, you know, well, that's be true, ages. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be ages. 
So then that's your priority. Monday, that's your big day. And then you, 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 you want to be stimulating those muscles 72 hours after that workout. So we'd prioritize another push-pull movement pattern workout on Thursday. But then Tuesday, Wednesday, you've got plenty of time to work on other areas of the body to be creating that symmetry balance and things like that, you know? Um, so uh, is this making sense? On a, yeah, on I a... tricked you into doing the thing that you said you wouldn't do. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I've, been, I've been fooled, damn it. Yeah, but you can see how you'd apply that for any, you know, particular Any goal, physical... any goal. If, you go, if your goal is, is, is financial, then it might be that you start to, um, you create a budget first, you know, or you have yeah. the talk with your spouse or partner about creating a budget first because if mm-hmm. you do it without her consent or their, his consent, they'll probably give you an uppercut. Uh, you know, and, and then you start going and focusing on daily behaviors, you know, changing the way you spend money, changing the way you shop or where you shop, you know, little things like that so that it fits in with that budget. Yeah, but I think um, the really key thing here is, as, as I briefly mentioned before, is that if you have this intention, if, you have, if you're really clear about what you want to achieve and how, and, but you don't necessarily know how to get there, then you've got this perfect roadmap that uh, well, you've got a good template to then go and work with a professional who can, you know, really fine tune what you're doing and help you reverse engineer that goal. But if you're unclear about what you want, if you just, you know, go start training just for the sake of feeling like you should be doing something without a clear intention of what you're going to, where you want to go, then it's unlikely that that person will just happen to take you where you want to go. If you're yeah. clear about it, then they can help you reverse engineer. But if yeah. you're not clear about what you're doing, then it's going to be really hard to do that. Yeah. Now, I want to say, I'm going to, I want to dive in and, uh, and, and have a look at the chat because there's some really good stuff coming in. And I love what um, Biaxid has said five ways. from the gym. Who's that? Yeah. Is Kumran from the gym? Oh, Kumran. Oh, yeah. cool. Five wise sounds like a conversation with my son these days. I know exactly <laughs> how you feel, brother. Um, now, the oh, I just lost my train of thought. Okay, this is what I wanted to say as a blanket statement for every single person who has a physical goal. If your goal is like Karina to do um, a, a whole bunch of push ups, an astonishing amount of push ups, I'm assuming that's in one big hit. Um, or uh, our friend Ben, who wants to achieve a certain um, bench press. My number one rule would be to seek some form of professional coaching, Uh, whether it's online with us, UMS, or uh, your preferred online coach, or a personal trainer who's qualified to help, like a decent um, uh, person, because there's so much that you can do wrong, Uh, like really laser focusing on one movement pattern is an example of doing something really wrong for your body. And I've done it before and my worst injury to my shoulder occurred when I had a goal of just no matter what, getting 140 kilo bench press. And that was, I think, two or three years ago. And uh, it was very much fueled because I had one of the strongest guys in the country, if not one of the strongest in the world in his weight division, uh, working and uh, in our gym. And I'm, I was very good friends with him and I just got really carried away with wanting to perform at that sort of level. And uh, I completely destroyed my shoulders and it took me eight months to rehab and it was really frustrating. And, uh, and, and it was so, fr- the, the most frustrating thing about it was that I know better and I just allowed myself to go down this path and, uh, and, yeah, and didn't, yeah. didn't think about how that fits into your larger, my larger you. picture, you know, and it, and it completely deformed my shoulders and, uh, took me a long time to correct after that, you know, so, uh, and it, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those things. Um, Karina's just jumped in and said, push ups are in sets of 20 over three hours. Aha. That makes it, um, now I don't think you're less, I, I think you're a bit, little bit less awesome, Karina. <laughs> That's all right. I'm I kidding. think you're awesome. I think you're awesome. I think you're absolutely awesome. So let's just quickly rip through and have a look at what uh, has come through um, because there's a fair bit of chat here and um, didn't see the notifications this morning. That's why we wait a little while, Kumra, to make sure that it goes out. I also did boxing many, many years ago, just training some sparring, never fought properly though. Uh, but, uh, man, I love boxing and I really, it's one of the things that I really wish I never, I, I didn't give up, but I just didn't have time to keep going with it at the level that I was going at. Uh, it becomes really hard when you, when you. I just couldn't think of anything worse than getting punched. Really? Like, oh, you like, get used to it. Yeah, I just, yeah. I just have no, uh, maybe I should try it one day, but. I was never, I just, just to. It does just, not appeal to me at all. Just to put it out there, I was never that good at boxing. Like I tried very hard to go to state and all sorts of different levels and I just got my ass kicked at higher levels. So, you know, you, it becomes this reality of like, you think you're good 
And then you come against someone who is actually good and you just get your ass handed to them. And I was very lucky that I got to box with the national champion at my weight division. I got to spar with him. I trained at the same gym with him here in Sydney. And, uh, and that was a really great experience. Um, but I think he was always going a little bit easy on me. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, Jared Kichi's just joined us. Plan to reverse engineer my goal to get one pull-up based on the tips and progressions Rad mentioned in the previous week. That is yeah, awesome. Nice. And again, just remember, um, um, focus on, like, really focus on goals in a few different areas of your life, you know, because that's when it starts to really become powerful. Okay, now I'm not going to let this go. A couple of people have said uh, really, really good things. Um, uh, Biac Seed, Kumra, I think, might be something to do while execution planning is to break down what your current day, week, month look like now so you know where to adjust. Now, that's what we're doing tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're going to go through a couple of, because my friend Scott Swalwell, who's coming on the show tomorrow, who's a motivational coach, and he's, he's very, very successful in life, business, family, relationships, everything. One of my friends who has the most stable marriage out of everyone I know, and he's achieved incredible things, and he's a very fit guy. He still plays um, uh, competitive basketball. We're like 40 years old. We're actually both turning 40 together in, uh, in a month or so, and um he uh, he's very much broad just on motivation coaching and also he um, uh, has a, a program that he teaches to sales in, in the corporate world. So we're going to go broad tomorrow. We're going to talk about productivity hacking and productivity um, destroying uh, and, and, and sort of go deep into like time blocking calendars and all those really cool little productivity hacks. Today, I want to focus on a few key elements that I have used to transform my motivation, and that is... Um, Sounds like you're starting the show again. <laughs> dealing with the psychology. I know, this is what I wanted to talk about, and I had planned to talk about it, but I got steered in another direction by Phil. Oh, I think um, by yourself there. Yeah. So I, got, I, I think the way I figure it, I've got five minutes, okay? So I'm going to talk about the three most um, useful things that I use, because the thing is... Once you've created a plan and you've got goals and all that sort of thing, execution comes down to mindset. It, it's, there's nothing more than that. It is mindset. On a day-to-day -day basis, how do you wake up and present yourself in a manner where you tick off the boxes that are required to tick, where you follow through with the habits that you need to have to make sure that you're moving in the right direction? And it comes down to programming the mind. And this is where, you know, a lot of people lose focus and, 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 and fail because they just don't embrace that this is a really important part of the process. I was never programmed in a manner that would furnish me saving money and creating wealth. I was never programmed in a manner that would, f that would support me building a business and a community and a tribe in the way that we've done now. The only way that I've done that is to reprogram my mind. And I do that through three very simple things. I actually do it through five, but I'm only, I've only got time to talk about three. One is, first of all, daily reprogramming, and that's done through affirmation. And affirmation early on in your journey, if you're trying to make big changes, is going to be critical. Later on down the path, it becomes less important. But first and foremost, you have to reprogram the way you think on a daily basis. And that comes down to writing affirmations that align with who you need to be. Essentially, you've got to become the person that you want to be now. You've got to start thinking. You've got to start talking. You've got to start reframing the way you speak about yourself. If you're injured, re getting rid of that injury identity, things like that. And that really is done through daily affirmation, okay? Second, meditation. Meditation is absolutely critical for me. It's just that way of centering myself and separating myself from my thoughts, feelings, emotions. And, and, uh, and you know, they come up for me daily. Um, destructive thoughts, self-sabotaging behaviors. Trust me, they're all there for me too. But because I meditate every day and because I practice a series of exercises when those things come up that allow me to disassociate from those thoughts, feelings, sensations, and urges, I can get on with my day without interruption. Uh, third is that I keep a gratitude diary, which is something that I do at night where I get home and I just think of five things that I'm really grateful for that allow me to be more present 
when we when we when we experience gratitude, like deep gratitude, things that we're really grateful for, like friends, family, business, my team, my tribe, then all DHEA is released into the body, which is a chemical that completely overrides the um, feeling of an anxiety. It, it overrides the stress hormones on a on a physio, on a biological level. They both use the same neural peptide receptor, so one knocks out the other, and that's DEHA, okay? So you need to be, gra- um, you need to be grateful at that point. It also helps you sleep, and, uh, and sleep's very, very important. My last two are um, uh, visualization and reading. I, I've made it an absolute essential part of my day to read a minimum of 20 pages of a good book every single day, and all of my books are related to business, they're all aligned with my value structure. So they're business relationships, uh, wealth creation, uh, and uh, improvement, self-improvement. Um, that's it. That's my strategy. Those are my five things. And that you I do also every mentioned day. your visualization. That's the last one. Visualization. So that's I, I, I spend about five minutes every morning as part of my daily meditation visualizing my future in my mind, which is exactly what Phil and I talked about the other day. I used to do it with my boxing. And it's a visual exercise, but I literally try to create uh, and play out a movie in my mind of what my story, what my vision looks like. And I help support that with a vision board at home so that I've got pictures, images of the house I want to live in, the, the who I want to present as, you know, physique wise, you know, um, I, I, it includes people I aspire to, um, all sorts of stuff like that. And, and um, you know, we can, we, we, we can go much deep. In fact, I am going to go much deeper into all of that stuff because I'm creating a course about all of this that, that, that um, you know, uh, you guys will be able to access later on. Does that help? Yeah. That, yeah, really good. That, I think we actually got more done than I planned to get done today because I wanted to go through those processes today. Tomorrow we're taking a deep, a deeper dive into productivity hacking, and you know what you guys can do immediately to get some results straight away. And uh, it's it, like tomorrow is going to be really, really useful. If today felt a little bit airy fairy to you, you know, vision, meditation, affirmations, reading books things like that, which I know will be sort of challenging concepts for some people to reprogram your mind. Tomorrow is going to be a more practical how to get more out of your 24. Yeah. So one, I, I've said it a couple of times now, but I really like the idea of, um, yeah, figuring out your goal and having a bit of a go at re- like reverse engineering it yourself, but then working with a professional to try and get that if you don't know the steps to take. Because yeah, when every physio session that I have, I ask people about yeah. What will count as success to them with the coming to see me? Like, what is it actually that bring, they bring? They come in to see, and what are their goals that we're trying to achieve? And if someone came in and they'd already had a go at, you know, being really clear about what they're they're doing, and I always ask, you know, context around what else is happening in their life, and if it was really clear what you want to achieve physically and in the rest of your life, mate, it would just make my job so much easier. Yeah. And I think you'd get so much value out of it if you if you do that. So yep. really um, do encourage you to give that a go and work with someone who can help you reverse engineer your goals. Yeah, absolutely. And um, look, guys, um, I can't stress to you how much uh, <laughs> value you get out of having a coach or a mentor to help you through this stuff. Everything that we've just talked about and everything that we do here is innovation based on stuff we've learned from other people. You know, you don't, it's very unproductive to try and reinvent the wheel. And all the biggest companies, the most successful people in the world have taken other concepts and innovated on those concepts. Very little is original these days. And that's what you get from having a coach. So whether it's a, I'm I'm totally against financial planners. Sorry for anyone out there who's a financial planner, because most of the time they're lazy and they just tell you to buy index funds and things like that. And you don't actually learn how to analyze companies. So that's the one thing that I'm not really into, financial coaching. But um, the only way you can really get good at finance is read, reading and educating yourself. I'm sorry, that's just the way I, that what I believe. But with health, with fitness, with business, with motivation, all of this stuff, a coach or a mentor is going to go so far for you. Yep. Um, yeah, just before we wrap up, uh, if you could smash the like button, please, that would uh, go a long way in just helping us get our stuff out there. Um, please subscribe to our podcast because now it's a thing. 
these these shows, you can listen to it in your ear holes while you're working out, while you're driving, while you're cycling to work, whatever you're doing while you're cooking and cleaning up, you can be listening to this um, instead of being in front of your computer or um, watching on a little screen. So yeah, please subscribe and rate us on the podcast apps. That would just make such a big difference to us and you can really help us. Pro, um, pro tip for tomorrow, uh, it is one of our productivity hacks, listening to audio. Mm, yeah. So um, you, you're you going to hear more about that tomorrow. Yeah. And uh, on tomorrow, I'm unfortunately going to weigh tomorrow, so I'll be definitely listening to the podcast at a later yeah, date. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, If yeah. these guys can figure out how to upload it without me. We do, we do have, <laughs> probably not. We do have a special guest coming tomorrow. He's, he's yeah. awesome. I'm very He'll excited be about me. it. And he's going to be replacing Phil, unfor- yeah. unfortunately. Not, yeah. not, not something I planned, but uh, <laughs> Phil has to go away for something. So... Thank you very much, guys. It's been a pleasure, and I'm, I'm loving doing this series, and I'm so glad that l- some of you guys are loving Can listening to it. <laughs> Katrina, thank you very much for saying that none of it's airy-fairy and it's all foundational. I completely agree. Unfortunately, some of these concepts fall on deaf ears to certain people. Yeah. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining. Jerikichi, thank you, Bioxid or Usman. Is it Usman? No, uh, Kumran. Kumran, sorry, <laughs> Kumran. Uh, Karina and anyone else who I've missed there, Um, it's fantastic having you all on and I'm so glad to see that you guys are getting something. Thank you very much to the guys who emailed me personally. I didn't get to go through everyone's emails. There were a few that came through. Uh, I'm so glad that you're getting something out of the videos and the daily blogs. Uh, we're going to keep them coming. We'll see you all tomorrow. Health is about performance, not just body image. You better be willing to accept what you're going to have to do to get there. We'll start focusing on movement goals, strength goals, flexibility goals. When you nail that skill, it's there forever. The body image doesn't get you that It's far. the consistency and frequency that's going to get you there. It's not the intensity. There's no shortcuts to mastery and movement. Destination doesn't change overnight, but your direction will. It's the gym is not the place to beat up the body that you hate. It's the place to build the body that you love. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image.